Hello Fiber friends! I love the look of mid-century hats, especially the ones that have an Angora halo. There's something about that iconic Angora that gives the hat such a romantic feel and I love it. So let's make one. What do you think? I have some Angora fiber that has been sitting in my stash for years. This is the last of the fiber I still have from my Angora bunnies, Peaches and Gaston. I believe that the best Angora fiber comes from pets who are lovingly brushed and cared for with lots of love and snuggles and treats. I also have this beautiful merino fiber sent to me from Pam who owns the Weaver's Shuttle in New Mexico. This sheep's name who grew this lovely fleece for us was King and his fiber is majestic. This is the same merino that I used to blend with the alpaca in my blending alpaca with wool video and since I have it here and it's all scoured up and it's really a fine fiber, it's really low micron count, it's really soft and luxurious. I thought it would be perfect to blend with the Angora for this project as well. Even more than alpaca, Angora fiber has no elasticity. My plan to mitigate that lack of bounce is to blend the Angora with Merino at about a 50-50% by weight and then spin a woolen, lofty, bouncy two-ply yarn. After it's spun, I will dye this yarn a lovely soft sage green color and my plan is to knit a simple beret pattern that will really highlight the texture of the halo of this yarn. The idea for this project came about from myself and several other fiber art YouTubers. We have created a playlist that has all of our Angora related projects in it. I will have that playlist linked in the video description below and also at the end of this video so you can find it. We are also using a hashtag for the Angora collab so look in the description for all of that information and you'll be able to search and find all of our different Angora projects. All right, let's get carding. Angora fibers are more fragile than wool, even fine wool. Because they don't have elasticity, they can snap and break if they are processed too aggressively and that causes them to lose their halo. We don't want that. I will card the wool once first and then add the Angora for the second pass. My method of putting the wool through first and then on the second pass with the wool, including the Angora, little thin layer of each, um, I think it worked really well. This bat looks terrific. It has the spring and bounce, but I can see the Angora incorporated throughout and I'm hoping that even though it's carded, we will still get some of that halo from it. 
I am going to split this the best I can down the middle and I'm going to weigh it just to get it as close as I possibly can. These bats are absolute luxury and I can't wait to get spinning. I will be spinning this up. For me, it'll be tomorrow, but for you, I'll be right back. And I'm back. I've been spinning for a little bit now and getting a good feel for how this fiber is spinning up. I am doing this with a long draw technique. I'm using my Ashford Elizabeth, and I have it set up in double drive. There are a couple of things that I'd like to share that will help you if you spin Angora to get a lovely Angora yarn that blooms the way that we want to take advantage of that feature of the Angora. The first thing is that Angora is slippery and it can fall out of the yarn if it's not spun tightly enough. But if we spin it too tightly and overspin it, it won't bloom and we won't get that halo. So there is definitely a window in the, in the center between too much twist and not enough twist. That will be the ideal place to spin the Angora to get all of the benefit of the halo and the loftiness and that softness that we are looking for. So it might take a little, a little testing, a little sampling to find where that perfect spot is for whatever equipment you're using, how you're spinning your technique and that kind of thing. So I am definitely making sure that I check with a plyback test as I'm spinning to make sure that the yarn is coming out to not only the diameter I want it to come out to, but also to have the look and the loft that I want it to have. Now, because I have more twist in the singles that will be somewhat removed when it is plied, I know that some of the halo isn't going to appear until the yarn is plied and it's loose enough that the, the ends of those fibers that are going to bloom out can, you know, be loose enough to bloom out. So this is definitely one of those yarns that you aren't truly going to know what it looks like until it's entirely finished. And that can be a little scary and a little intimidating. I know that Angora is one of those fibers that a lot of people have in their stash and they're scared to try it and scared to use it. But the thing is, you can't know what it's going to do and you can't know what techniques and um, you know methods are gonna work for you and your spinning with Angora until you try it and until you get it to the finished state to really take a look and see what it's doing. So if you do have Angora, I really encourage you to dig into your stash and play with it and try it and use it and see what it does and how you like it. And, and that's a little bit part of the idea of this collaboration that you can get um, some different ideas, some different methods and see some different ways that we can use this really neat fiber. The spinning is complete and it is time to ply my two bobbins. I noticed when I did my plyback tests throughout the spinning that this yarn has a static charge to it. However, this didn't affect the spinning and I don't expect it to be a problem while I'm plying either. I've noticed with some other staticky spins I've done in the past that the static goes away after I wet finish the yarn, so I'm just going to press on. I want my ply to be nicely balanced for this yarn so that the Angora has room to bloom. This is looking good, so I'll try to maintain this twist angle throughout by checking it when I pause to slide my hook. Finished the plying and now the yarn is on a nitty knotty. This was an exciting moment of counting how much my yardage came out to, and it is about 263 yards, which means I do have enough for the project that I had planned. The pattern um, called for 240 yards, I think. So that's very exciting. Next up, we are going to dye this yarn.
Angora yarn was a popular yarn to use in hats, sweaters, and trims during the early 1900s and up through much of the 1960s, 1970s, when mohair took over as the go-to yarn for a halo effect. Patton's produced a now discontinued line of yarn called Fuzzy Wuzzy, which was a four-ply fingering weight yarn of 55% Angora and 45% wool. There were a few other yarn companies that had their own versions of the popular Fuzzy Wuzzy Angora yarn, and there are many vintage knitting patterns suggesting these yarns. As a hand spinner, I love that I can spin to duplicate historic yarns for projects, whether those yarns are from medieval Norse Greenland or 20th century America. I looked for a pattern specifically made for Patton's Fuzzy Wuzzy to use for my project. I set out to find a beret style hat and settled on this 1960s Angora Tam. It's available from Nostalgia Rules and their collection of digitized vintage patterns. This pattern calls for four balls of Fuzzy Wuzzy, a total of 40 grams of yarn. I'm hopeful that I will have enough for the hat as well as for a swatch. When working with Angora yarn for anything requiring specific gauge, it is essential to swatch. The delicate Angora fibers can be damaged from ripping back to fix a gauge problem. And that's in addition to the fact that I'm knitting this pattern with what amounts to a yarn substitution. So swatching is required to make sure I end up with a tam that is going to fit my head. My swatch is looking good, so it's time to knit this hat. Like many vintage hat patterns, this hat is knit flat and then seamed up when it is finished. It's a little disorienting because I am so used to working hats in the round, but I'm enjoying the adventure. The knitting is coming along really, really well, but because a uh, Tam or a beret hat is one that increases, increases, increases as it goes. Here's the right side of the fabric. Um, I don't have room for all the stitches and I haven't nearly increased as much as it's going to need. So I will be switching to these aluminum needles which are much, much, much longer than my little bamboo needles. Um, so <laughs> I kind of wish I was using circulars but these are the needles I have that are the gauge I need, so that will have to do. I'm also using my vintage knitting counter, which I felt was just really appropriate for this pattern. Bamboo is grippy anyway, but I feel like the Angora was even extra more grippy than just wool on the bamboo. The halo is, you can see it. I hope you can see it. Um, it's really just starting to bloom and it's exactly what I was hoping for. It's just so soft and lovely. Um, the more I work with it and it runs through my hands and I have it, you know, as I'm knitting along, the more it's starting to fluff up and fuzz up and get that halo going. As I'm now working through the crown of the hat and going through the decreases, I decided to switch off of these long metal needles, which are frankly kind of heavy and awkward and slow down my knitting. Um, but it was just what I needed to have that many stitches on a straight needle. Other than that, <laughs> <laughs> the awkwardness of the straight needles. Um, the pattern is pretty straightforward. I did have to read through carefully to make sure I was understanding exactly what it was asking for, but that's just the way of vintage patterns. You just have to be really careful that you know what's going on. Um, but other otherwise, once I got it figured out, it's really been an enjoyable, just relaxing, knit and I've had a lot of fun just seeing how this yarn kind of halos up as I go and the colors. I'm really pleased with the dye, how this came out. It's just not so chunks of stripes. It's a little bit more um, just the colors kind of distributed, which 
goes along with that halo look. I, I think it's all working out really well. So I will be back in just a moment to show you the big reveal. Are you ready for the big reveal? It's fantastic. I couldn't have asked for a better project. I think there's really nothing I would change about the project itself. The only thing I might do is use circular needles instead of those straight needles, but that was just a comfort thing. And the project itself, fantastic. But we have one last test for this hat, which is to find out if it's shedding. I'm a little nervous. We're gonna try that in just one second. But first, I want to leave you with a comment of the day. Would you wear this as a tam or as a beret? What do you think? How, how should we style this hat? Let me know what you think. I made a little I-cord bind off for it, so it has this little tab here. Um, I think technically a tam should have a little pom-pom, but <laughs> it has a little tab. <laughs> uh, the instructions for the pattern gave options for both, so I thought that was pretty cool, but um, pom-poms just quite aren't me, and I want it to be a hat that I will wear and enjoy, and I thought maybe with a pom-pom I wouldn't. So. <sighs> Here it is. Also, let me know, would you put a pom-pom on it or leave it with the little I-cord tab? <laughs> oh, I am just thrilled. I, can you tell I'm so giddy? This, yeah, this project was just wonderful. So I have a bolt of velveteen fabric and I'm gonna put that on the table. I'm gonna take the hat and I'm swiping it across the velveteen to see do we have any of this fiber shedding out of the hat or is it holding on? I think this hat passes the test. My supervisor is here to see what's going on. <laughs> I think this means we are officially bunny approved. <sighs> it's perfection. What more can I say? It's wonderful and I love it so, so much. So thank you if you have watched the video this long I'm gonna tell you that there was a little Easter egg in this video of an upcoming video something I'm working on so I hope that entices you to come back and watch some more of my projects my spinning adventures and I will wish you happy spinning fiber friends mm -hmm.